the new Cadillac Escalade. We have quite a bit to cover in a short amount of time. We have this for two days, so this is going to be initial impressions. And boy, is there a lot. I just got done with my first round of plastic surgery. I got my lip fillers and all my muscles bulked up. And this is the perfect vehicle for me right now because I feel like I am in the lap of luxury. Now, if you've ever seen Cadillac in the past, you'll know it's been a mixed bag of quality, interior gimmicks, and it may not have been pure luxury. And this is the biggest turnaround I've ever seen in an American brand. This is so impressive. Everything is so amazing in here that if you're looking for a luxury truck SUV, that's right, a full-size truck that does not feel like it's been nickeled and dimed in cost cutting, you're gonna be blown away by this. There's also a longer wheelbase version of this called the ESV, but as this one stands that we're in, it's about $105,000 or thereabout. And let's go over it. Look at the door card or the door panel. You have this canvas-like fabric material that is beige or white, and you know if you're not in a nice area like we're in right now, it is gonna look like somebody played in the hog pen in here. It's just gonna get so disgusting, and I feel bad. This is one of the first vehicles I've gotten in where I feel bad about wearing my shoes in here. It's like a nice hotel room. The leather is soft. There is no chrome. How is this possible? It's matte chrome, and boy does it blend into the design aesthetic. Everything here from material choice all across the board is amazing. You have a suede headliner, you have soft touch leathers, you have the canvas on the interior, the carpeted floor mats don't look like they're out of a Walmart discount bin. The armrest is, the center armrest has an option to put a chilled cooler for your wine bottle that you can't open while you're driving. There's subtle things in here that can be improved, but I'm going to nitpick most of this. Your visor, you can only, you have only have finger cutouts for the right hand. So if you want to get here in the left hand, you, you have to dig at it. So I think there's some attention to detail that can be improved over the life cycle, but let's get into the, the main thing. That's the screens. Look at the front dashboard. And if you read the Cadillac marketing press release for this, I counted how many times it said OLED. And it was like 38 times. I didn't really count it, but it looked like it, they mentioned OLED over 38 times. And that's because they're one of the first to use OLED technology in an in-vehicle cabin. And there's a reason for that, and I'll go into it in a bit. But LG has designed the screens, the curved OLED displays here, for the infotainment, the gauge cluster. So not only did they do the screens, they did all the software for the screens on top of it, including the camera system. So when you look at this, and if you've never seen an OLED display screen before, they use P-OLED, which is a plastic substrate in their screens, so it makes it incredibly thin. It means they can also curve the displays, and the black levels are the best thing you've ever seen in any car. And I'm not, I'm not kidding, it's the best display technology you're going to see in any car. So you can turn the center gauge cluster into a map. You can turn it into a night vision camera, which you have to pay extra for. You can also turn it into a front view camera where you can see everything in front of you. And if you're using the onboard mapping software, it turns it into AR, which means when you turn through the display, it will show arrows where you need to go using augmented reality. So all this software and hardware are mated together to give you a very unique and special experience. The counterpoint with all the screens and using OLED technology and LG OLED technology in a car is if you've ever been to a store where they have always on phones and displays, specifically LG phones, like I have an LG V50, the first thing I saw is there's burn in and ghosting on OLEDs. Same thing with TVs. If you have an LG OLED or any OLED display that's on in a static, like a ticker bar or static displays, there tends to be ghosting and burn in over the, the course of using it over three or four years. So that's gonna be one of the huge negative attributes to this if you're putting a lot of miles on it. You're gonna potentially have display problems and these are not gonna be cheap. Everything in here is not gonna be cheap to replace and you have to know that going in. If you're gonna buy this long-term and keep it long-term out of warranty, keep it in mind. All right, let me shut this door. Physical controls. Yes, there is minimal carryover or what feels like parts bin stuff on the steering wheel, but that is so minor compared to the detail of like the center stack where the HVAC controls are. 
This has this matte chrome finish and all the buttons are, the physical controls feel very clicky. They look great. Even this kind of veneered, glossy, stylish wood trim accent on the dashboard doesn't look like crappy plastic. It doesn't look like fake wood. And I think this elevates the perceived experience of this. Now, when we get into the audio system, this is AKG, which is yet another Harman owned brand. Uh, this was a high end audio maker. The big takeaway about this interior space is there's a lot of glass. So I feel like there's a lot of echo in here. But one of the cool things with technology with all these speakers is they have a conversation assistant button that you push on the steering wheel. And this is the first I've seen it used like this. It takes the microphones in the front and then projects your voice to the back to the speakers. But when you have that on and you're driving this, you'll notice even more reverberation when you're talking. And at first, I didn't understand what the system was doing. And there's this echoey feeling. Once you turn it off, a lot of that disappears. Let's get into the back because I think that's where many people are going to be curious about this. But I will say the back seat space and cargo capacity is very much like the Tahoe that we did a video on and the Suburban. This is on the same architecture, so they have the same type of interior dimensions to work with. Most everything feels almost identical, aside from the quality of materials, the seats, the carpet, of course, the screen technology, the lighting, the ambient lighting, and little detail work that you're going to see on the outside that separates itself from the Suburban and the Tahoe. So much, so many good things going on here that I think you're going to love owning this and driving this vehicle. But enough of that. Let's get in the shop and just briefly talk about some of the technical points of the chassis and suspension. Underneath the all-new Escalade, Mark, this is a new model for 2021. Tell me about the it. The Escalade has always been making a bold statement about how you have arrived. They have, for 2021, entered a new era of sophistication, adding layers on layers of prestige, making this one of the most boldest and forward designs of 2020. Forward designs and prestige, Mark, that's tight. And let me tell you about this. With this new generation, it's on the T1X architecture, which means it's got an ind independent rear suspension, which has helped increase its car-like driving nature, combined with its specifically tuned Magna Ride dampers paired with air springs. The independent rear suspension has also allowed for a flat load floor and has increased the cargo capacity by 30 the to The interior has bold and striking design. With a combination of industry-first curved OLED displays, it gives the passenger and rider a sense of sophistication and forward thinking. So Mark, tell me about the curb weight. I don't know what it is. 5,800 pounds. Okay, sounds good. Let's get this out on the road and take it for a drive, Jack. All right. Oh yeah, I just moved out of my apartment and into this, Jack. This is pure luxury. I have put it in sport mode so you can experience what it's like to really jet set. All right. Well, what do you expect? That's 6.2, Mark. At 6.2 what? That ruffled my affluent feathers. Oh man, this this is exactly what I expect from a vehicle of this weight, stature, and size. It is deceivingly quick. I thought it would just be feel like the engine strained. It's the perfect choice for a cruiser like this. And may I say, I know we talked about it in the interior and we don't have a ton of time with this but I'm absolutely floored with how good this is. And I'm not even saying that. It, it, Cadillac and GM products are typically this mixed bag of kind of like, they kind of have this fake luxury feel to it. This is the first thing I've been in where everything matches up to the price tag and then some. Yeah, this is surprisingly impressive. When they dropped this off in my driveway and I've seen some footage of this from other reviewers, I was blown away by how much nicer this is than any other Cadillac product I've ever been in. For my entire life, Cadillac has essentially been a joke outside of their V products. And this, this is every bit as nice to drive, to be in, and really just to experience a lot of the other German competitors. I never thought I was gonna say that. I, I didn't think so either. I think when you say it's, it was a joke, I think it was a joke compared to some of the other high-end luxury brands. This finally matches up with what 
everybody else is doing and nobody else is doing a truck like this. I mean, Lincoln has, you know, Lincoln has stepped up their game to compete with this, but this is definitely on another level. It's because of the V8. It, it's the V8. It definitely makes a huge difference, but it's also the ride quality. This thing is so buttery and pillowy soft. You have air ride. You still have the truckishness and the truck capabilities of off-road and towing. And, you know, you're probably going to, you're more than likely going to tow with this because you could take this cross country. You could take it across the ocean. <laughs> if there was a way to take this inner, you know, across the pond, I would. That's how comfortable it is. So here's my question. You and I spent a lot of time in the Tahoe Z71. This is on the same architecture as we mm -hmm. talked about in the shop. And depending on Tahoe or Suburban trim level, you can get the same engine. Is this twenty-eight, thirty, forty thousand dollars nicer than? Oh, that you truck? just jump from twenty to forty thousand. Which is it? Uh, I think this one versus the one we had is like thirty-five thousand dollars more. Well, yeah, obviously, if you have the money, absolutely, it's a no-brainer. If I was on the market for a hundred thousand dollar truck, and I'm sure you could get this close to that, like spec'd out, this is amazing. All right, what else do we want to talk about, Jack? Let's quickly talk about the drivetrain. So this is a 6.2. This is their 6.2 with DFM versus AFM. And how does it feel mated to this 10-speed? Shit. I mean, people that want this, it, 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 does, it does everything that you expect it to. The gear shifts are imperceptible. It's pillowy soft. The steering doesn't have a high amount of effort. Like, it doesn't take a lot of effort to turn this. You could basically turn it with your pinky. Uh, but it has this really solid heft to it that we felt in the Tahoe. Uh, it's it's all here, just interior quality-wise. This is on another planet. Yeah, and of course, like we talked about in the Tahoe, and this has just improved it with the air ride and the Magna ride dampers. You have great ride isolation as well without missing out or losing out on the truck thing. Your fuel economy suffers. There are some negative points like the price and the fact that, you know, you can argue depending on where you live, Cadillac doesn't have the prestige of, say, Porsche or some of the other brands, but really past that, this is a really, really solid offering. Yeah, but you can't get this size of a truck anywhere else. No, you like, can't. You have to go American. A, it's American only, and finally, we have an American, like, truck SUV that uh, is is doesn't feel like it's trying and faking it it really is luxury now the, the question is is you know longevity wise you know how's the build quality how's the fit and finish past year one dealership experience dealership experience you you brought that up in the past and you know as a first year product you can't ask for anything more final thoughts on the cadillac escalade there's no doubt a majority of this video has been overwhelmingly positive. That's because Cadillac has leapfrogged multiple generations in terms of quality, technology, design. Basically, everything here is so far ahead of what they used to do in the past that I have to give them credit for putting all the energy, engineering, and design detail in here. It does not feel like a traditional GM product, and that's what floored me. The interior design is great. The exterior is definitely, as we joked around about in the shop, they keep overusing the word bold in their press releases, but it does stand out compared to the other truckish SUVs. And that's what I will say. If you're looking for the best luxury truck-based SUV, it doesn't get much better than this. If you're somebody that needs a smaller product, more car-like driving experience or typical crossover SUV feel, where it's more soft, smoother, more responsive, this is not that. This still has the element of truckishness in its overall ride, and that's because of the size and its capability. So if you go in understanding that you are a Chevy person at heart, or even if you're looking at some of the Ford competition, it, you know, I thought the Lincoln stuff was good. This is definitely pushing the competition higher. So I appreciate you watching this. Hopefully you take a look at this and understand all the technology that's baked in here. This is definitely something you're going to want to lease in this generation or have a million mile warranty. See you next time. <laughs>